Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Victron Smart Shunt. Victron Smart Shunt is actually this thing here in the middle. The bus bar is my addition to it. So it looks more neat and it's more, it has a better purpose when servicing the system. Now, first, before we talk about the Smart Shunt any further, let's see what other things I have tried before. I have tried Renergy battery monitor. It actually works good. However, I cannot pull data out of it. It's very accurate and probably work good if you are using it on, on your system without any data collection. Uh, actually, there are inside of it there are ports for the serial connection, however, we, I could never get any data out of it by myself or with somebody else's help. That being J Blends, which you can find on the GitHub. In addition to that, I have made this bus bar for the uh, Renogy battery meter. And shunt is this part over here. Everything else is the addition that I made. In addition to that, I have tried this little device over here. Uh, though accurate, you have to tend to it a lot to keep it accurate. Okay, and this one is is has a CD monitor on it, and that monitor resides over here inside the battery up on the top portion. In addition to these battery monitors, I even tried to create my own battery monitor however I didn't get that far because I ran out of time and I had other things to do uh, in my life so I couldn't really finish it and plus it requires some coding which I'm not skillful with so I abandoned that project and went with a Victron smart shunt the reason why I went with the Victron smart shunt is because actually you have a serial port on it that you can extract extract data out of it okay and that's this cable over here as shown in the previous video and it goes into a Raspberry Pi 4 which is connected to inverter number 2 and in today's news everything is working fine producing power I haven't have a need yet to go on grid it is difficult to show accuracy of the shunt however if I put these two together and kind of stare at them the data does match the numbers do match to each other and I think it's accurate enough on this big of a scale of uh, power walls that I have so in that department i have nothing to complain about and i think it will serve me for a long time okay now <clears throat> let's let's discuss uh price of the device now the smart shunt costs 131 dollars versus renergy that costs 88 dollars versus this one that costs about 45 dollars uh, if I knew from beginning, I think I would have gotten a smart shunt. I don't think I would have tried Renogy or any of this cheap Chinese stuff that you can get off of Amazon. Uh, Victron makes a good stuff, and I think, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it deserves that price tag. Uh, not that I agree with it, but compared to the other things and the information that you get, I think it does, it, it does justify having a higher price. Now talking, now comparing the Renogy to the Victron Smart Shot, uh, uh, both of these devices are programmable, okay? However, the Victron Smart Shot has more programmable functions than, than the uh, uh, Renogy, Renogy Smart Meter. And those differences show in the setup of the device. Um, if we go here, you can go to, we can go to battery, uh, and we can set up all of these parameters for the battery, for the battery. 
anything from a battery capacity to fully charged voltage to what your discharge floor is, what's tail current, uh, charged uh, detection time, and so on and so forth. Okay, and I believe, and plus you can you can synchronize when your battery is full, and you can do a zero current calibration. Uh, none of those things are present here. The basic things are present on the Renogy. Just you setting up, uh, you you're setting up your total capacity, uh, and uh, alarm for a discharge floor and whatnot. Victron Smart Shunt has more stuff to set up than a Renogy. Okay, including what kind of a battery you have, and what kind of a battery you have down to what kind of a, a charge and efficiency factor you have. All of that data is considered and consider, uh, taken into consideration when providing you with the state of charge of your battery. They actually put a whole lot more effort into designing this device than this basic uh, Renogy battery monitor. And on top of it, if I haven't mentioned yet, is I can extract data out of it and I can store it and I can look at it over time to, to determine what's best for my system and how my system is performing in a long run. And another thing that, that is good about the Victron Smart Shunt, it can be incorporated into your uh, home automation software. Uh, you do not really have to go through a Raspberry Pi to get all that data, you can actually connect this directly to your home assistant or other automation software. The Victron company does provide you with, uh, uh, with a protocol so you can develop your own software or use some of their software that is already provided to work with the home assistant. Now, let's go look at, at the stuff that I geek out about the most and what are the capabilities when displaying data all right we are looking at my favorite part of Victron smart shot I don't think it's difficult between all these companies to develop a shunt and some kind of a software that will report data on your phone and whatnot however I like that the smart shunt has already code released or protocol released where you can do something like this now this is all of the data that you can receive from your smart shunt in addition to the, in addition to this data I store every day every piece of information onto my influx DB which is on my server so I can historically look at this data however this is how why uh, this is how I uh, present my data over here in uh, Grafana. All of this data can also be imported to your home assistant or some other home automation software and whatnot. That's what Victron is good about it, and that's that's why I think the price is higher than the other products available out there. So on the top, we start of course with any battery monitor. It's a it's a state of charge. Okay, right now I'm at 100%. The batteries are fully charged. It's like about 4:30 in the afternoon. Uh, the next one is the last depth of last discharge in the amp hours. Right now, since the power was full, it shows just zero amp hours. However, if you look at the graph over here, it shows how much, how deep did I go on the discharge and when it got charged. Okay, time since the last full charge. That's a zero seconds. That normally shows hours, days, hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. Next to that, of course, is power voltage, which is at 55.45. I'm still playing with these settings. Okay, probably going to go a little bit higher than this, but I'm leaving it at this right now. Time remaining. It shows minus one minute. However, it will display time remaining depending on what kind of a load you have on your battery what kind of a, what kind of a load you have on your power wall okay so same with other with other uh, shunts that they can display this information this is exactly the same in the uh, uh, smart shunt bluetooth software it shows infinite when 
but I show minus one minute. Maybe I can change this into something else, but this is what it shows right now. Here's the interesting part. What I like about it kind of the most. It says power will charge the energy. This is a total amount of energy that I charged Powerwall with since I turned on the system on March 30th that afternoon. Powerwall was fully charged and uh, I started draining the battery. However, this charge shows how much I put total in a Powerwall. Discharge energy is how much I totally took out of. Okay, so if you if you complete the cycles, it is completely charged right now, and I the last discharge ended this morning. And if you take these two numbers and if you divide three or one five nine with three one four forty eight, you will get round trip efficiency on your on your power wall. Mine is at ninety five point nine percent. So for every kilowatt hour that I put in a power wall, I get 0.959 kilowatt hours back. I think that's a cool representation. It's a cool data point to have when you have your power walls. The next one, which I haven't figured out yet how they calculate total and charge cycles. Uh, I'm thinking it is the amount that you put into the power walls, uh, discharging and charging and then it calculated, calculates it in some way. I have researched the uh, charge cycles um, on a YouTube and whatnot. Charge cycle is not, let's say you drain your battery from 100 to 75 percent and charge it back up. That's not a one cycle. I think the cycle is when you get one full trip of your full, let's say, 1,000 amp hours. Your full trip is 1,000 amp hours drawn and 10,000 amp hours charged. That's your uh, one cycle. I believe that to be a case. So in my case, 1,080 amp hours. Uh, when I drain that out and put that back in, I believe that's one charge cycle. So far in 17 days, I have three full cycles. That's the, belay, that's the way I believe uh, this number works. Deepest, deepest discharge was 945 amp hours. It was, it was cloudy one day and raining and produced absolutely nothing, but we used a lot of power. Power will average discharge. That's the numbers from back and forth between all these cycles for 17 days and I think I believe it's correct 639 amp hours. It will record your minimum power voltage and a maximum power voltage for historical data. Of course you have a power wall current. I'm displaying it as a graph so we can see how much how many amps are we drawing at certain points of time. You can see it zero and this is negative that's discharging and this is my charge cycle from this morning. I believe this sufficiently explains everything we need to talk about with Transmart Shunt, which I highly recommend and I think everybody working with the power walls should have one. If you guys have any more questions please don't be afraid to ask down in the comments. I appreciate you all watching my videos. I try, I'm trying to dedicate more time to this. Thank you. Have a great day.